Hello. In this video, we're going to introduce the complex power function. We'll give you new, the definition and an example of how it works. Now, power functions have been around for a long time. You know that uh, you first learned that powers represent multiplied multiplication multiple times. And when you have a negative power, that means take the reciprocal of a, of a usual power function. You also know that if you raise a number to a fractional power with real numbers, what that means is you're going to take the qth root of the pth power if your exponent is p over q. Now, a deeper question, one you may not have considered too deeply, is what exactly does it mean to raise something to an irrational power? And today, we're going to ask the question, what does it mean to raise something to a complex power? Well, we'll answer both of these questions uh, with our definition. We are going to define the complex power z to the alpha, where alpha is any complex number, simply as z to the alpha means the same thing as e raised to the alpha times the logarithm of z. All right. Now, why do we do this? Um, the answer will come because we're trying to make our, our definitions agree with what happens in the real case. Uh, you may remember from calculus, if nothing else, sometimes it's useful to write b to the x in a slightly different way by writing e raised to the natural log of b to the x. Now we can do that and keep it equal because e and the natural log are inverses of each other. Now what we can do next is use the property of natural logarithm that says that if you have a power on your inside quantity, that power can come out as a coefficient in front of the natural logarithm. All right, so we're just simply using rules about exponential functions, logarithms, and inverse functions to change b to the x into e to the x ln of b. Now this is useful to do, though, because sometimes uh, you want to take the derivative for b to the x, for instance. And if you don't remember what the definition is, or if you've never derived the definition of the derivative uh, for b to the x, you can take b to the x, write it in this way, and take the derivative of this expression, and as long as you remember the derivative of e to the x, and if you can use the chain rule, the derivative of this expression will come out to be precisely what you remember the definition being for an exponential function. All right, so this uh, trick uh, has many different uses, and we're simply going to appropriate the, this expression in writing our definition for the complex power. So let's see an example of, of how to evaluate a, a complex power. Let's suppose you wanted to evaluate 2 raised to the minus i. Now, before we actually go through this, what I'd like you to do is uh, take a look at what's involved. Try and come up with three or four or five different steps, uh, high-level steps, that you'll go through in evaluating this. If you want to, you can actually carry out those steps, but if you don't want to actually carry them out still, please try to come up in your mind with a general overview of what the solution will involve. Do that now. Okay, let's go through the solution here. We're going to start evaluating 2 to the minus i by just plugging in the 2 and the minus i into our definition. 2 to the minus i is defined as e raised to the minus i times the logarithm of 2. Now for our next step, we need to evaluate what the logarithm actually means. Now there is a formula for that that is uh, covered earlier. Remember, the formula for the logarithm is simply to take the, uh, the real valued natural logarithm of the modulus, and the modulus of 2 is just 2, and then add i times the argument of what was inside the logarithm. Here, 2 is a real number, so its argument is 0 plus any multiple of 2 pi. Now, when we uh, simplify the, uh, the minus i uh, times this quantity, we're going to uh, combine the minus i with this i and uh, that will leave a positive 1 times 2 pi, and then the minus i will still be attached to the logarithm base e of 2. Now remember, k can be any integer. Now, uh, we've uh, evaluated the logarithm part, but now we have all of this still in the exponent of the e, and there's a definition for that as well. So we'll remember the definition of the complex exponential, and our next step will be to simplify this based on that definition. And remember, the definition says you're going to take e raised to the real part of the exponent, and then the imaginary part, this minus logarithm of 2, will be what goes inside the cosine and the sine in our polar form. Now simplifying just a little bit, the, uh, the minus sign inside of a cosine goes away. The minus sign in front of a sine can be pulled to the outside. We have now a polar form evaluation of 2 to the minus i. 
Now, if we want, we can actually go ahead and plug in what the values are. You'll see that we have a k, where k could be any integer. And as we plug in different values of k, we get different answers, which is kind of interesting. These are approximate values, not exact ones. And remember, k can be any integer, so there are infinitely many different columns on this table of approximate values. All right, so we've reached an answer, but this brings up an interesting point. The complex power mapping, z to the alpha, just like the nth root mapping we've already seen, is a multiple fu function, multiple valued function. There are multiple answers spit out by this power function. Keep that in mind. In the next video, we're going to take a look at a slightly more complicated example. See you then.